in Tejeron, in the Valley of Garbage, in the dump of garbage. We declare ourselves willing to go to be considered garbage because people out there don't want to be rescued. How many people out there want to be rescued? They just don't know what the lifesaver is. They just don't know what the fire escape is. It's up to you to bring them a lifesaver. It's up to you to bring them a fire escape. Make sense? But we're going to share now. Matthew 22, 12. Yeshua said to them, using the parable, what is a parable, Tan? An earthly story with a deep spiritual meaning. What is a parable? An earthly story with a deep spiritual meaning. What is a parable? An earthly story with a deep spiritual meaning. Very good. Matthew chapter 22, verse 12. And he said to them, friend, how did you come in here not having on a wedding garment? And the man was speechless. <laughs> Then said the Melech to the Abadim, bind him hand and foot. Circle these words, take him away. I don't care what your definition of hell is. All I can tell you is the lost will be taken away. Away from Yahweh's home, away from Yahweh's presence, away from Yahweh's tabernacle, away from Yahweh's throne. That is hell. When you don't have the author and finisher of your faith and life, and you have no access to him, you die in torment. The same way you can't live without water. Eternally, you can't live without the, without the source of living water, the fountain of living water. We dry up. Then said the Melachim to the Abedim, verse 13, bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Whoa. Darkness, fire, weeping, gnashing of teeth away from Yahweh's presence. Who? To anybody who thinks they're a friend of Yahweh and they can just walk into the wedding and they're going to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb and there are a million ways to, to, to the Creator. He says, if you make your own way to the Creator and you don't put on the wedding garment of salvation, the garment of Yeshua, you will be thrown out of the wedding. You'll be thrown out of the tabernacle. You will be put in, in the, outside the camp, not just outside the camp, but in a garbage dump, you will be treated as garbage when I want to rescue you and make you into a jewel. I'm assuming you're quiet on me today because this is a sobering topic. I'm assuming you're not angry. And if you are angry at me, I couldn't care less. So I'm going to let you be quiet, but I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Matthew Jahu 2530. Now, if Ruthie gets angry at me, that'll get my attention. Matthew Jahu 2530. And cast the unprofitable servant of it into outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew Jahu 18.9. Matthew Jahu 18.9. These are just a few of the scriptures that we need to cover. If your eye offends you, pluck it out. Cast it out. It is better for you to enter life with one contact lens, I'm using modern vernacular, and blind in the other eye, and have two eyes and be cast into Gehenom fire. So it's not the condition of your body in this life, it's the condition. Are you, are you, will you be camping with Yahweh, or are you going to be outside Yahweh's camp? And trust me, this is a sleepaway camp. Because this is permanent. You're never going home without the blood of Yeshua. The whole thing in Torah, in the camp, out the camp, in the camp, out the camp, in the... What's Yahweh trying to say? He's trying to say there's a reward for receiving my righteousness and there's a punishment for refusing my righteousness. If you can't see that in the Torah, then don't bother believing in hell. That's what Yahshua is teaching us. Yahweh is teaching us. Matthew Jahu 23.3. Matthew Jahu, Matthew. Meaning the gift of Yahweh. Matthew Jahu. Matthew Jahu 23.33. You serpents and generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation found in Gehenom? The very religious but unrepentant I'll never forget, I used to go, I went shopping one time, and I ran into a Greek Orthodox man. 
And he was he had this long beard, gray beard, was down to his foot. And he had his wife, and she was all religiously dressed. And I that's what I used to be doing more evangelism. And I handed him a track and I said, Sir, are you born again? She dropped her groceries. This is right in the middle of the public. Middle of the supermarket. She goes, Do you know? Do you know who you're talking to? This is the great Greek grandfather patriarch, Mamaritis Arthritis. He's the head of the Catholic Greek Orthodox Holy Communion by Faith Church of the Jesus. Oh, pardon me, ma'am. I, I, but is he? And I'm not lying. Is what I said in my in my zeal. But is he born again, ma'am? All right, now. She goes. That's it. And she gave me a look. It was like the filter of the Hudson River coming up in my face. And she goes, Demetrius, he don't know who you are. Because this was like the grand poupa. But I said, are you born again? He goes, born again? I believe in the Blessed Mother. I was baptized as an infant. Of course I'm born again. I knew in my heart he wasn't born again. Right, Mary oh yeah. You keep believing in Mary for your salvation. Yeah. See me in camp, see, see me in La La Land. In other words, you can have a beard and still go to Gehenna. <laughs> Wrapped up in. Oh, man. He said to the Bruchim, come on guys, how are you going to escape the damnation of Gehenna? Tell me, tell me how. Tell me, how are you going to escape the damnation of Gehenna when you reject me the fire escape? Mark 9.43. Mark 9.43. I'll never forget that encounter. Do you know who this is? Well, as a matter of fact, madam, I don't. Please, clue me in. Mark 9.43. If your hand offends you, cut it off. For it is better you enter Chaim Main than having two hands to go into Gehenna, into the fire that shall never be quenched, where the worm dies not and the fire is not quenched. What does that mean? Teach me. What does that mean? where the worm doesn't die, and the fire isn't quenched? Are there worms, snakes, uh, rattlesnakes? Or, what does that mean, the worm doesn't die, and the fire is never quenched? Well, we know the fire is never quenched. We understand that. The worm that doesn't die is the wormy, wicked memory that you left behind, dying without the blood of Yeshua, dying without a wedding garment. Your memory, your existence, in other words, the worm that you produced while living, that garbage dump that, that, that in Gehenna, those worms, those, those maggots, those insects, that's what people are going to remember you as an insect who passed through the Gehenna and refused to be cleansed. It's pretty sober stuff, pretty sobering stuff. So when someone says, well, hell is a place where there are worms and the worms talk and they don't die. No. The worm is a metaphor for the memory and the, 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 the uh, life of the wicked. Those who try to get into Yahweh's good graces without a wedding garment. Matthew John 11, 23. You better let Yeshua give you the wedding garment. So we, we see here in Torah and in the Brit Hadashah that Gehenom is a place to be, to shun and to avoid. Mahi Jahu 11.23 And you, Kafar Nahum, what is Kafar Nahum? Capernaum, wrong, the town of Nahum, the prophet. Where do we get Capernaum from? It is the hometown of Nahum, 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 the prophet. But I say to you, Kafar Nahum, which is exalted to the Shammai, why? It was Yeshua's headquarters on earth, and it was the prophet Nahum's home, and the sight of many miracles shall be brought down to Gehenna. For if the mighty mitzvot which had been done in you had been done in Sodom, 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 and Gomorrah would have remained till this day. But I say to you, Kfarnichum, Capernaum, 
I say to you, the village of Nahum, the prophet,